Welcome to PBCJ's A Different Life, your window into the world of persons with disabilities. I'm your host, Dr. Christine Hendricks. In this episode, we will be delving into the Disabilities Act of 2014 and unpacking the various ways in which it will protect the rights of persons with disabilities in Jamaica. After the break, we will be seeking some insight regarding this legislation from lecturer and director of the Center for Disability Studies at the University of the West Indies, Senator Dr. Floyd Morris. Back in a moment. Welcome back to A Different Life. I am Dr. Christine Hendricks. With me now is Senator Dr. Floyd Morris, lecturer and director of the Center for Disability Studies at the University of the West Indies. Welcome, Senator, and thank you for joining us again. My absolute pleasure. Now today, Senator, we'd like you to assist us in breaking down this matter of great significance to the community of persons with disabilities the Disabilities Act. Let us start by you outlining to us what exactly is this Disabilities Act and what is the intended purpose? Well, the Disabilities Act is legislation that has been formulated by the government of Jamaica to protect persons with disabilities against discrimination, all forms of discrimination. And what that will seek to do is to bring persons with disabilities in the mainstream of Jamaican society because you know that globally persons with disabilities are regarded as one of the world's largest minority group and they are marginalized because of their exclusion from educational institutions, mm -hmm. their isolation from health care, from the labor market and the negative attitudes that exist within society towards these individuals. Mm -hmm. And so this legislation now seeks to correct that social deficit mm -hmm. and bring persons with disabilities in the mainstream of Jamaican society. Sounds exciting. So what are the main objectives of this Disabilities Act? Well, the major objectives of the Disabilities Act is to promote respect and the dignity of uh, persons with disabilities, to promote the participation and inclusion of persons with disabilities in the mainstream of Jamaican society, and to ensure that persons with disabilities are not discriminated against in the Jamaican society. Those, in a nutshell, constitute the major objectives mm -hmm. of the Disabilities Act. Okay, great. So what are some of the ways that this Act proposes to accomplish these objectives? What it will do is that it will put in place uh, a, a, an institutional framework for managing issues relating to pers persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. So for example, you will see the establishment of a new JCPD, you will see the establishment of a board to govern that a, a new JCPD, you will see the establishment of a disability rights tribunal, which basically will set the institutional framework for promoting the legislation. Mm -hmm. And then you have regulations and the codes of practice that will form a critical part of the legislation to make sure that the rights uh, of persons with disabilities are not violated. Mm -hmm. So on one hand you have the institutional framework mm -hmm. and on the other hand you have the regulatory framework mm -hmm. that will serve to protect persons with disabilities. Okay, awesome. So what are some of the key areas that are highlighted in this act? Well, you know, there are some exciting areas in the legislation. Uh, one, I, I, I tell you, 
the, the new legislation in terms of its institutional framework will see the Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities being transitioned into a statutory body, uh, a body corporate as the legislation uh, calls it. And what that will do is uh, currently the JCPD is a department in the uh, Ministry of Labor and Social Security. Mm -hmm. It will now evolve into a full statutory entity where it functions independently of the um, Ministry of Labor and Social Security. Mm -hmm. And that is going to expedite the services that are provided for persons with disabilities because I know that currently the new JCPD has individuals have to go to the ministry when they apply for services uh, um, for, for, through the JCPD. And under the new dispensation, the JCPD will have an in-house facility where they have responsibility for all of these services and then it will expedite. Uh, services to persons with disabilities and I'm certain that persons with disabilities are looking forward uh, to that. Then you have the Disability Rights Tribunal which is a sort of quasi-judicial body that is going to serve to uh, oversee and look at any form of discrimination mm -hmm. that uh, takes place against persons with disabilities and will function uh, similarly to that of the industrial disputes dispute tribunal uh, so so again you have another uh, uh, exciting institutional framework that has been crafted in the legislation to protect persons with disabilities and then you have other provisions that look at how persons with disabilities are to be treated in educational institution mm -hmm. and training institution, how persons with disabilities are to be treated in healthcare and health facilities, mm -hmm. the whole situation of employment mm -hmm. of persons with disabilities, housing and uh, public uh, transportation. These are some of the exciting features that are going to be activated in the new uh, the Disabilities Act 2014. We have been working on this legislation for quite some time, but the implementation has taken some time as well. But we have to take a short break right now, and then we'll be diving back into things in just a few. We'll be right back. Welcome back to A Different Life. I'm your host, Dr. Christine Hendricks, and with me is Senator Dr. Floyd Morris. Again, thanks for joining us, Senator. Absolutely. We have been taking a look at the Disabilities Act and the ways in which it will benefit all of us, really, not only persons with disabilities. So earlier you outlined for us some of the key areas highlighted in the Act. Now I'd like us to zero in on some of those areas. The issue of discrimination, for instance, is one that comes to mind. What are some of the different ways in which discrimination impacts persons with disabilities? Well, uh, disability discrimination comes in different shapes and form. And, you know, um, sometimes it's subtle, sometimes it's blatant. Mm -hmm. And what discrimination does is to uh, prevent persons with disabilities from accessing programs and services on uh, an equal basis with others. Mm -hmm. So for example, individuals don't realize that if they offer a public service, mm -hmm. Uh, say they have a store and the store doesn't have an accessible entrance, mm -hmm. that uh, store is preventing a person with a disability from accessing the service. Mm -hmm. And that in of itself is a form 
of discrimination because discrimination it takes place when you serve to seek to exclude or to isolate a person with a disability from participating in an activity on an equal basis with others. If it is that you have a public concert, for example, that you advertise and a person with a disability turns up and, you know, there are no access provision for that individual uh, to enter that public uh, facility. The, 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 an act of discrimination is taking place. Uh, if, if it is that you advertise for a job and a person with a disability applies and there are no provisions in place for uh, the person with a disability, an act of discrimination is taking place. If the person with disability goes to court and makes a request for a uh, reasonable accommodation and that accommodation is not provided uh, that um, person is being discriminated against so uh, and, and there's a whole plethora of global rulings on 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 the whole issue of discrimination and uh, Jamaica have to make sure that it gets up to speed in terms of understanding what is discrimination and how it actually impacts on the person with disability. So we know that there are different types of persons with disabilities and so the discrimination could be in varying forms. Right. And it could be that um, it is intended or it could be that it is not intended mm -hmm. but it ends up being discrimination anyway. Absolutely. And Absolutely. so persons will have to understand and know as a society what it means so that they do not discriminate. And that is why the public education process is going to be fundamental in terms of sensitizing the nation as to how dis discrimination operates mm -hmm. and how it impacts on the person with disability. Awesome, awesome. Now, so if the Disabilities Act will protect persons with disabilities, how will it do this from, dis from discrimination? How will it do this? Well, you know, um, what the law uh, has done is to outline a number of steps and guidelines for institutions to uh, um, not to engage in in order to prevent discrimination against persons with disabilities. So, for example, it spells out the things that educational institutions should do in order not to discriminate against persons with uh, disabilities mm -hmm. and likewise in public transportation in housing in health care mm -hmm. and the law gives the new jcpd the authority to formulate codes of practice mm -hmm. to help guide in preventing discrimination against persons with disabilities so the law never just say boy you can't do these right. things um, uh, in, in healthcare, in education, and so forth. It went as far as giving the new JCPD the, 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 the authority to formulate codes of practice to help those institutions in preventing uh, discrimination against persons with disabilities. So, you know, I know and I am aware that you're going to see in um in the, in the initial implementation of the law the the, the um, codes of practice for education and training the codes of practice for employment mm -hmm. uh, the code of practice for health care and health facilities and already the uh, building code which will form a critical part of the anti-discriminatory uh, practices in the society have already been established based on the, dis the, the, the Building Act, uh, which is a sister legislation to uh, the Disabilities Act. And, 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 and so th those mechanisms, those measures mm -hmm. are going to be this, uh, helping in terms of preventing discrimination against persons with disabilities. So persons will be, the, will be without excuse. Absolutely. Because support will be provided. Absolutely. All right, so can you tell me exactly how the act will facilitate things like education and training? 
How will it help to facilitate that? Well, uh, definitely what, what it does, it, as I said, it points to specific actions that must be taken by institutions providing education and training to the public. So it has to make sure that its facilities have access features for persons with disabilities. It has to make sure that uh, teachers are trained to uh, support persons with disabilities. It has to make sure that uh, um, uh, there are accessible technologies in the educational space for uh, persons with uh, disabilities. And, you know, um, what, what will eventually happen when you, when you put the, 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 the education, uh, the code of practice for education to the law, you are going to get a clearer understanding as to what are the measures um, and the support systems that are there for educational institutions. So it's not as if you know the, the educational institutions will be out there on their own. And you know, I, I, I tell you, I am anticipating all of this coming together over time mm -hmm. and see a significant injection of persons with disabilities in the educational space because the law, the law. Uh, uh, both the Disabilities Act and the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities promotes an inclusive education environment, mm -hmm. meaning that persons with disabilities should be getting education in the same environment as those individuals who uh, are not um, who do not have a, an obvious disability. In terms of employment, I know that um, it's more than just facilitating and employing somebody, but how will the act impact when the person is actually within the employment space and what should be transpiring in that space? Well, you know, I mean, it, it, it makes provision for the uh, employer and uh, all the staff members of the organization to treat persons with disabilities with great respect and to make sure that the same services uh, um, that are and benefits that are available to other workers in the um, in the in, 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 in the environment that those individuals that that the same benefit is accrued to yes. a person with a disability mm -hmm. and you know persons with disabilities who are there in the uh, work environment are subject to what we call reasonable accommodation meaning that you know organizations have to put in place measures support measures that will assist the person with disability in effectively carrying out their work functions on a daily basis mm -hmm. and that is the, the whole principle of reasonable accommodation is entrenched in the disabilities act but is also entrenched in international law how important is it that this act be enforced and implemented you know uh, I, I pointed out in a previous uh, interview that the World Health Organization is pointing to approximately 15, between 15 and 17 percent of countries' population having persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. In Jamaica, that would amount to over 450,000 uh, uh, individuals. Mm -hmm. We can't afford to have that sizable portion of our population being isolated, being marginalized, being excluded mm -hmm. from the mainstream of our society. And so what this legislation will do is to bring those individuals in the mainstream of society by what I call liberalizing public services mm -hmm. for persons with disabilities to access. So we're talking about 
freeing up the education space, mm. freeing up the uh, employment space, freeing up the transportation and housing space so that persons with disabilities can access them on an equal basis mm -hmm. with others. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it is imperative that this be done because you can't have sustainable development taking place and a significant portion of your population being left behind. Mm -hmm. And that is what the legislation seeks to do. And it is extremely important that it be implemented post haste. Very well said, Senator. I'm going to ask you to stick a pin right there because we have to take another quick break. Stick with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to A Different Life. I'm Dr. Christine Hendricks. Our guest today is Senator Dr. Floyd Morris, lecturer and director of the Center for Disability Studies at the University of the West Indies. Senator, our discussion so far has been very informative, particularly as it relates to how the Disabilities Act will serve to protect the rights and interests of persons with disabilities. I'd like us to now take a look at how the Act will be implemented or enforced. So for instance, what do I do if I feel as if my, right are being, my rights are being violated or I'm not being respected? as a person with a disability? One of the things that I, um, based on my years of experience in the field of disability studies and my international um, association is how important it is for persons with disabilities to document when they feel that they are be, their rights are being violated. Mm -hmm. Because while it is that you know, um, you can verbally express what was done to you. It is important that you establish a paper trail. Mm. And so if it is that you feel that your rights are being violated by an institution, by an individual, it is important that you start the process by writing to the individual or institution expressing what has taken place and how you feel about the matter. And it is also going to be important that we engage in active public education of persons with disabilities themselves mm -hmm. as to what their rights are under the Disabilities Act so that when they feel that their rights are violated, they can make reference to the particular section. So if it is in education, they can speak to how their rights are being transgressed. If it is healthcare, they can speak to it. And so, you know, I mean, the process of documentation is going to be very much important and for the individual to have an, a discussion with the organization or individual who there is that perception of discrimination. If there is no resol resolution there, the person with disabilities have to go to the Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities, who is going to be that designated authority to uh, um, uh, administer the implementation of the legislation. And the JCPD will document again uh, what has taken place and start its investigation and based on its investigation it might opt to engage upon a process of mediation or it will can refer the matter directly to the uh, disability rights uh, tribunal. I, I want to point out mm -hmm. that irrespective of the disability rights tribunal being established as a creature of the law, that it does not take away the right of a person with a disability to take the matter through the, um, the regular justice system. Mm -hmm. uh, because that is a fundamental right that is uh, 
um, established under the Constitution. But what, um, you know, is likely to happen is that these, these justice systems will love to see process being mm -hmm. followed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would advise persons with disabilities to make sure that they start the process by documenting at the individual or institutional level, taking it to the JCPD, the JCPD taking it to the uh, mediation or the Disability Rights Tribunal. And if they feel that they're, they're not getting anywhere with the Disability Rights Tribunal, they can always depend on the uh, justice system in Jamaica for uh, uh, redress. Where can we go to learn some more about the Disabilities Act and what is to come? Well, you know, I mean, they, I'm, I'm certain that the Ministry of Labor and Social Security and the Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities currently have their public education program going and they are working in tandem with the uh, Jamaica Information Service and other uh, public broadcasting uh, organization and so that information is there uh, but I would also uh, suggest that they check the website of the Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities to ensure that they get a greater insight as to what the legislation entails and um, I'm certain that uh, by the time the uh, minister sets the effective date for the legislation that the codes of practice will be in place on the websites and individuals have to make sure that they are fully okay, that they get a full understanding of the codes of practice because these are designed to guide in helping to pre prevent discrimination against persons with disabilities. So I believe that, you know, if they check with those uh, um, institutions and uh, websites, they can get additional information on the legislation. Thank you so much for speaking with us today, Senator Morris. It has been such a pleasure. There is so much to understand, and it sounds like there are exciting times ahead for Jamaica, especially for persons with disabilities. We anticipate it all. I am anticipating that yes. too. And <laughs> it's really exciting as an individual with a disability myself, and as one who has been fighting and uh, assisting in pushing the process, I'm looking forward to its implementation. Indeed. This has been the PBCJ's A Different Life. I'm Dr. Christine Hendricks. Thanks for watching and see you next time.